Sagar Pandya over here. Let's try to understand what comes in this story. It's quite an interesting story. It talks about elevator, which we call lift, isn't it? So the story begins like this. Before that, let me tell you William Slater, who he was. This is the photograph of William Slater. And he has written this story. Quite an interesting story. Very, very interesting material in the story. So the story says, it starts like this. It was an old building with an old elevator. Please try to understand each and every word and focus how the story starts. In the beginning of the story itself, the writer has written that it was an old building and old elevator, which means that it was not maybe working properly. It was not functioning in a proper manner. And this belonged to an old building. So the building itself was not in a very good condition. It was a very small elevator which could carry only three people. So here it is also told that the elevator size was very small. Around three people could come in. So it was not a big elevator. It was not a big lift. Martin, the name of the boy is there. Martin, a thin 12-year-old, felt nervous in it from the first day. तो यहां पर यह भी पता चलता है कि पहले दिन से यह जो मार्टिन लड़का है वो नर्वस फील करता था इस लिफ्ट में बैठने से ही एंड हिज फादर मूव्ड इनटू द अपार्टमेंट जिस दिन से वो इस अपार्टमेंट में शिफ्ट हुआ था इस फ्लैट में शिफ्ट हुआ था उस दिन से उसको इस लिफ्ट में बैठने से डर लगता था वो नर्वस फील करता था एंड ही वाज नॉट फीलिंग प्रॉपर और जब आपको प्रॉपर फील नहीं होता है एंड स्पेशली व्हेन यू आर अ वेरी यंग बॉय लाइक मार्टिन ओनली अ 12 ईयर ओल्ड ही स्टार्टेड फीलिंग नर्वस और यहां पर एक और वर्ड है जो आपको ध्यान रखना है ही इज मेंशनड एज अ थिन 12 ईयर ओल्ड फेल्ट नर्वस तो यहां पर वो बहुत फिजिकली वीक है ऐसा भी एक मेंशन किया गया है एंड द पर्सन एंड द बॉय हु इज फिजिकली वीक also will be mentally weak, isn't it? तभी आपको बताया जाता है कि अच्छा दिमाग चलाना है तो अच्छा खाना भी आपको खाना पड़ेगा, right? Nutritious food is quite required. तो यहाँ पर एक connection ऐसा भी लगता है कि physically ये जो बच्चा weak है, उसकी वजह से शायद वो कहीं under confident भी feel करता है और वो हमेशा nervous feel करता रहता है, right? So he was feeling nervous sitting in this elevator. And this elevator also was quite old, so it was not functioning properly. This is what we know from this, right? Let's go to the next part. Of course, he was always uncomfortable in elevators. So, it's not that he feels uncomfortable from coming here. He uncomfortable feel karta hai. Maybe earlier also he was not feeling comfortable sitting in an elevator, afraid that they would fall. And he always felt scared that maybe the elevator would fall and I will get hurt or I will die or something like this. Some disaster will happen. But this one was specially unpleasant and specially in this particular elevator, as we know, this was quite old, not functioning properly. He was specially feeling a little more uncomfortable sitting over here. Perhaps this was because of the poor lighting and the dirty walls and the reason, all, reason is also given. The lift was not functioning properly. It had poor lighting and the dirty walls. The ambience of the lift was not very encouraging. Some of the lifts, you know, they are quite well lit. There are very good glasses. So, you feel that it is a big big lift. But this lift was very poor in it. The lighting was very poor in it. टाइप की वॉल्स थी मतलब उसका जो एक्सटीरियर था उसका जो लुक था वो बहुत ही खराब था गंदा था पर हैव्स इट वाज बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द डोर व्हिच नेवर स्टेड ओपन लॉन्ग इनफ एंड स्लैम्ड शट विथ अ लाउड क्लैंगिंग नॉइज ये सारी चीजें जब आप पढ़ते हो सुनते हो तो आपको ऐसा लगता होगा कि ऐसी लिफ्ट में हम भी कभी बैठे हैं isn't it so sometimes we have also this kind of experience some of the lifts when they are not working the doors you know they are shut in such a manner that we get scared and sometimes the lift also gets thumping on the way so when it is climbing up or climbing down there is a jerk that we feel and because of that we don't feel comfortable we feel that maybe the lift would fall and we will we will get hurt so the same feeling is over here of this boy Martin as well and he is also feeling that the door is not staying open for long enough and that's why entering this particular lift is a little scary because it is always a fear isn't it that you will get 
between those two doors that are clanging and you will get squeezed between them. We often feel something like this, isn't it? So this boy also is feeling on the similar lines. Let us move to the next part. It is said, perhaps it was the way the elevator shuddered each time it left a floor. So every time when the floor was crossed, the lift just shuddered, means it shook so heavily that it uh, left, it, it felt like shivers on the spine, as if it was exhausted. The lift itself was so tired and exhausted and so dilapidated as far as the condition is concerned that anybody would get scared. Maybe it was simply too small. The lift size also was quite small and once you get inside the lift, you feel as if the walls are closing in and they are going to squeeze you in between. It seemed crowded even with only two people in it. So obviously the size of the lift was a little bigger. Maybe three people would fit in. But this boy always felt that, you know, even if it's two people, the lift was quite crowded, the elevator. It was very, very crowded. It felt as if it is very small and there is no space inside. The stairs were no better and he was not even happy with the stairs. Martin tried them one day after the school and what was the experience? Let's see. There were no windows and the lights were not working. Now over here on the stairs also when he was going, he did not feel comfortable because there was no lighting. There was no ventilation over there. There was no sunlight coming. There was no windows kept. So. In all condition, the, the building itself was very old styled building and that is why he felt suffocated. This feeling of suffocation also triggered the idea of claustrophobic uh, nature in him. And he was feeling claustrophobia over there. He was feeling as if the space was quite dark and dull and it was not well lit. And because of that, he was not feeling comfortable there. Martin's footsteps echoed behind him on the cement as though there were another person climbing, getting closer. So again, you see the psychology of this boy, all of you try to understand this line a little better. Over here, it is quite clear that Martin always felt that somebody is chasing him or somebody is climbing behind whenever he is on the stairs also. So in the lift, the feeling was heightened. It went a little up and he was feeling that in the lift also something scary is going to be there or in the lift also he will get hurt. And it says that by the time he reached his home on the 17th floor, he was gasping for breath. Martin's father worked at home. Martin's father was always at home. He was having some work where he was not supposed to go to the office and he was always working from home. So Martin was almost in company with his father, which was not a very good company because we will come to know about that also later on. And on the 17th floor, when he climbed, obviously that's quite too many of steps and he was gasping for breath means he was panting. He was not able to breathe properly. Next, it says he wanted to know why Martin was out of breath. So, so the father is asking this question. Why didn't you take the elevator? He asked, frowning at Martin. Frowning means he was angry. You are not only skinny and weak and bad at sports. His face seemed to say, but you are also a coward. Understand students very, very clearly over here. How is the attitude of the father towards this boy? The father is not very happy with this Martin. And he always feels that he is physically weak and he cannot do anything. He is a coward. And he is also bad at sports, so he cannot play also properly. So he is a very, very timid kind of boy. Timid means covered. After that, Martin always took the elevator. And because of these harsh words from his father, very, very critical remarks by the father did not go well with him. And that is why after that, he started taking elevator because he wanted to prove to his father that he is not weak. He is not scared. He is uh, able to do certain things. He would have to get used to it, he told to himself. And then he made up his mind that he will always take elevator, just like he got used to being bullied at school. Now, again, one more point that proves that Martin was not a very confident child and at school also, there were certain instances where he was bullied by the other classmates 
or the schoolmates and that proves that he was physically not very brave kind of person he was not very confident and that is why the others were also constantly after him and they were troubling him so in school also the life was not quite comfortable for this martin but he did not get used to it he was always afraid that it would stop suddenly and he would be trapped inside it for hours by himself usko hamesha aisa lagta tha yahan par ki kabhi na kabhi kisi na kisi din ye jo elevator hai wo band ho jayega aur wo उसके अंदर फंस जाएगा और घंटों तक वो वापस बाहर नहीं आ पाएगा एंड ऑब्वियसली दैट इज नॉट अ गुड फीलिंग बिकॉज फॉर अ पर्सन हु इज फीलिंग क्लोस्ट्रोफोबिक द पर्सन हु इज फीलिंग सफोकेटेड इन द क्लोज एरिया उसको हमेशा लिफ्ट में ऐसे ही फीलिंग आती है और वो कंफर्टेबल नहीं रह पाता है राइट सो क्लोस्ट्रोफोबिया इज अ कंडीशन बट इट वॉज एन मच बेटर वेन there were other passengers he did not like to be close to them and this martin our you know uh, our protagonist over here wo hamesha aisa feel karta tha ki logo ke paas bhi usko maza nahi aata tha when the others were around him all, he always felt that you know this closeness is not good so he did not like lot of proximity with the people he always wanted to be alone so we can say that he is a person who is introvert and he does not like to mingle with other people he does not want to uh, get mixed up with other people and the next line says he also disliked the way people tried hard not to look at one another staring at nothing aapne hamesha elevators mein dekha hoga ki jab bhi log wahan par khade hote hain to normally wo darwaze ke samne स्टेर करके खड़े रह जाते हैं राइट दे डोंट लुक एट ईच अदर अंटिल एंड लेस दे नो अदर्स राइट तो जब वो जानते हैं तो ऑब्वियसली बातें करते हैं अदरवाइज वो डोर के सामने देख के खड़े रह जाते हैं ओके okay, तो वो टेंथ फ्लोर से आ रहे हो या फिफ्टीन फ्लोर से आ रहे हो जब तक लिफ्ट खुलती नहीं है तब तक वो दरवाजे के सामने देखते हैं और ये जो फीलिंग है ये जो ये जो मैनर ऑफ बिहेवियर है वो मार्टिन को अच्छा नहीं लगता था एंड देट इज वॉट ही डिसलाइक्ट वट एल्स इज देर वन मॉर्निंग द एलिवेटर स्टॉप एट द फोर्टीन फ्लोर और यहां से हमारी कहानी में एक और कैरेक्टर एंटर होता है और काफी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी बन जाती है तो यहां तक हमने देखा कि मार्टिन का कैरेक्टर कैसा है उसका और उसके फादर का रिलेशनशिप कैसा है फादर उसके साथ कैसे बिहेव करते हैं मार्टिन को स्कूल में कैसी ट्रीटमेंट मिलती है वो किस टाइप के अपार्टमेंट में रहता है वहां की लिफ्ट कैसी है ये सारी चीजें हमने यहाँ पर जान ली है आगे क्या होता है One morning, the elevator stopped at the 14th floor, and a fat lady got on. She was wearing an old green coat that ballooned around her. So, she was very heavy. 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 strange and she is not walking it is mentioned over here she waddled into the elevator so she was taking very small steps and entered martin was sure he felt it sink under her weight and martin felt that because of this heavy weight lady maybe the lift will fall down and i will also get killed she was so big that her coat brushed against him and he had to squeeze himself into a corner i'm sure you can see that these words are bold over here and squeeze himself into a corner means he was pushed aside because of the presence of that lady let's move forward and let's see what happens next there was no room jagah nahi hai andar elevator mein the door closed quickly behind her and instead of facing it matlab door ke samne dekhne ki bajaye wo jo lady hai wo kya karti hai she turned around and stared at martin Martin is obviously scared right now. He is standing in a corner, and he is quite, you know, in a very less space. He is uh, standing over there, and this lady is staring at him, which obviously makes him quite, you know, uncomfortable. And this stranger is not welcomed properly by Martin. He looked at her for a moment. She had large, flashy cheeks and no chin, just a huge mass of neck. her blue eyes were tiny but sharp so she looked with sharp eyes at this boy and she is also having a figure a physique that is not very attractive and she is mentioned over here as a person who has almost 
you know no chin and she is full of neck so her 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 body part of neck is quite huge that is what is mentioned over here it also says that they seem to be boring into martin's face and she looked at martin in such a way that she pierced him and she just stared at him in a very sharp manner martin looked away but the woman did not turn around was she still looking at him he glanced at her quickly then looked away again she was still watching him so this is what makes martin scared he wanted to close his eyes he wanted to feel safe he wanted to feel that nobody is around him nobody is watching him but he couldn't do that because in his mind somebody was constantly telling him that he is with this fat lady and this fat lady was making him come uncomfortable he wanted to close his eyes he wanted to turn around and stare into the corner but how could he it was impossible he couldn't do that and then he was just feeling uncomfortable the elevator creaked down to 12 then 11 one by one floor by floor the elevator was going down the piggy eyes were still looking at him so the button like eyes of that lady they were staring at this boy martin she had to be crazy and martin felt that this may this lady is not maybe in her senses and that's why she is constantly staring why else would she stare at him like this what was she going to do next she did nothing she only watched him breathing loudly until the elevator reached the first floor at last over here first floor students is the ground floor okay this is an american story william slater is an american writer and in america normally in the usa they call first floor as the ground floor so they count from the ground floor and that's how they name their floors let's move to the next part martin wanted to run past her to get out but there was no room and because of very less space he did not he was not able to run he could only wait as she turned and moved slowly out into the lobby then he ran he did not care what she thought he ran nearly all the way to school and continuously this boy ran and he moved to his school he wanted to reach to his school as fast as possible because he felt that you know somebody is chasing or somebody is scaring him and that is why he just wanted to go to the safer place that he felt which is his school okay even where people bullied him now he thought about her all day now this is also quite strange this martin is scared of this lady but still he is continuously thinking about this lady and he is occupied by her thoughts he is not able to pay concentration he is not able to pay attention to anything else he is not able to concentrate on anything else he is continuously thinking about this lady he had never seen her before and the building was not very big maybe she was visiting somebody but 7:30 in the morning was too early for visiting and martin constantly thought that where this lady was living why she was in the building and why so early she was visiting anybody's house and all these questions were lingering in his head and he was constantly occupied by these ideas martin felt nervous when he got back to the building after school when he returned when he returned from the school he was still nervous but why should he be afraid of an old lady still the thought is there i'm sure you can understand that he felt ashamed of himself to usko khud ko bhi yahan par apne aap pe sharam aa rahi hai he is feeling embarrassed so i am sure you can uh, note down this idea aapki notebook mein aap ye sare points likh sakte hain kyunki ye jo martin hai wo khud ko hi sharam feel kara raha hai aur usko aisa lag raha hai ki mere mein hi kuch kami hai uski wajah se mujhe aise khayal aa rahe hain he pressed the button and stepped into the elevator hoping that it would not stop और यहाँ पर मार्टिन अगेन उसको ऐसा है कि मुझे उस लेडी को नहीं मिलना है और उसको जितने स्पीड में हो सके उतना अपने घर के फ्लोर तक पहुंचना है और घर चले जाना है बट इट स्टॉप्ड ऑन द थर्ड फ्लोर तो यहाँ पर थर्ड फ्लोर पे अगेन ये जो एलिवेटर है वो स्टॉप होती है मार्टिन वॉच द डोर स्लाइड ओपन रिविलिंग अ ग्रीन कोट अ पिगिश फेस एंड ब्लू आईज विच वर ऑलरेडी स्टेरिंग एट हिम एज इफ she knew he would be there so over here again i have 
you know, highlighted this part as if she knew he would be there. Obviously, there is no thought like that in the lady's mind. Even if there is something like this, it is only in the mind of Martin. So Martin is preoccupied with the idea of this lady and the thoughts of this lady. Otherwise, there is no sign that the lady is thinking about that boy. It wasn't possible, he thought. It was like a nightmare. But there she was. Going up, said Martin. So Martin is asking a question. Are you going up? His voice little more than a squeak. He couldn't speak. He couldn't speak properly. He just squeaked out these two words. She nodded and stepped on. And then she came in. The door slammed. Again, here the It slams. It is not closing silently or smoothly. Kuch elevators aise hote hai ki unke darwaze bahut achche se smoothly band hote hai. Par jo darwaze smoothly band nahi hote hai aur awaz karke band hote hai, usse humko kabhi kabhi dar lag jata hai. He watched her pudgy hand move towards the buttons aur wo dekh raha tha ki wo ab kaun sa button dabayegi. To uska bhi usko constantly khayal aa raha hai. She pressed not 14 but 18, the top floor. So obviously the building was of 18 floor. That is what we come to know. Or Jo Martin hai wo konse floor pe rehta tha? Ham sabko pata hai 17 number, right? So yahan par 14 ki jagah par wo lady 18th floor ko press karti hai, which means she is going to the highest floor. The elevator trembled and began to go up. Or elevator uski apni uh, signature style mein awaz karke band hui or bahut hi shake karti hui ya fir. बहुत ही वाइब्रेट करती हुई ऊपर की तरफ चलने लगती है। The fat lady watched him. This morning she got on at the 14th floor. So why did she get on at the third floor today and go up to 18? तो यहाँ पर तीन अलग-अलग फ्लोर के नाम दिए गए हैं। Martin is constantly thinking that from what floor the lady is coming in, on what floor she is going, which floor she is pressing, and everything else about that lady. She, he is constantly thinking about this woman. The elevator seemed to be moving more slowly than usual and this time he felt that the elevator is going slower than usual. Martin wanted to press 7 so that he could get out and walk up the stairs. So this time he wanted to go out of this elevator so that he can take the stairs but it did not happen. He could not reach the buttons without touching her and he did not want to do that. He wanted to stay away from that lady and that is why he did not want to go in the situation where he has to touch the lady. When the elevator stopped on his floor, she hardly moved out of his way. He had to squeeze past her, rubbing against her horrible scratchy coat. So the coat itself is so scratchy and mentioned as horrible because Martin was not even comfortable with the coat that she was wearing. So over here, everything about the lady was making him uncomfortable, nervous and he was not feeling proper. He was afraid the door would close before she could, he could get out. So here also he is, the feeling is of scare, he's scared right now, he's afraid. She turned and watched him as the door slammed shut. Now she knows I live on 17. Again, the mind game starts over here. There is something constantly telling Martin that this lady is watching him and now he is scared that this lady knows that I live on 17th floor. Have you ever noticed a strange lady in the elevator? He asked his father that evening. So he is having a conversation with his father and he asks him that have you ever seen a lady like that? Can't say I have, he replied. Not looking away from the television. His father is watching television. He is not even bothered about the question that the boy is asking. And it shows that his father was quite detached. He was not paying attention to his son's queries or questions or whatever doubts he had and he was always occupied or he was right now looking at television and he did not pay attention to what Martin was saying. Martin knew he was probably making a mistake but he had to tell somebody about the woman and the only person that he can share his feelings is his father but the father is not you know respecting his feelings or he is not even listening to him and that is why he feels detached or disconnected from father. Still, he is trying to continue the conversation. She was in the elevator with me twice today. She just kept staring at me. So, the boy over here, the son, is trying to tell something to his father who is practically not listening to him. She never stopped looking at me for a minute, he continues. Father says, what are you so worried about now? His father said, 
turning impatiently away from the television. Now he is not happy and he is asking Martin that why are you talking about something like this and why are you worried about such kind of stuff? What am I going to do with you, Martin? Honestly, now you are afraid of some poor old lady? I am not afraid. You are afraid, said his father. When are you going to grow up and act like a man? Now I am sure you are all able to observe and pay attention to this word. He is saying that why are you not growing up and why are you not acting like a man? He is expecting this from a boy as young as Martin that he should behave like a man. He wants him to be mature. He wants him to behave in a proper manner and not act childishly. But Martin is just a boy and he is not able to think properly. And that is why his father is unhappy with him. He feels that he is physically weak and all these things. And that is what he is thinking. Let's move to the next part. Are you going to be timid all your life? And then he is asking one more sharp question. And he says that, are you going to be scared like this all the time? Are you going to be timid? Are you going to behave like a cowardly boy all the time? Martin did not want to cry in front of his father. So he waited until he got to his room. Martin is not happy by these remarks, obviously, and he wanted to feel, he wanted to cry. He was overwhelmed by this feeling of crying, but he could not cry in front of his father. His father was insensitive, we can say over here. And in front of his father, the boy was not able to express his emotions also. His father, when he went to the room, knew that this boy is going to cry or he is crying, but he did not care. He did not even take any attempt. He did not attempt to comfort this boy. Martin slept very little. On that night, he was not able to sleep well. In the morning when the elevator door opened, the fat lady was again waiting for him and he again confronts her. Martin stood there unable to move, then backed away. As she saw him, her expression changed. She smiled as the door slammed. Martin started running down the stairs. And now Martin is very, very scared and he is not taking the elevator. He takes the stairs and then he runs down the stairs. The stairs were dark and he fell. And in this, on the staircase, he was not able to go properly and then he falls down. His father was silent on the way to hospital. He's hurt. He's badly hurt and he's supposed to be taken to the hospital. The father obviously is taking him, but he is not talking to the son. He is not even asking why are you, you know, scared, what made you scared or uh, why did you fall down? What happened to you? Nothing like this. He is just sitting silently over there, disappointed and angry with him for being a coward and a fool. So the father does not have great, you know, respect for the boy. And whatever the child does, whatever happens to the child, he is almost insensitive and he is not even considering what is he feeling. Martin had broken his leg and needed to walk on crutches. He could not use the stairs now. Was that why the fat lady had smiled? Again, Martin is thinking about the lady. Did she know that what would happen to him? So this is what he is thinking. At last... At least his father was with him in the elevator on the way back from the hospital. So when they were returning from the hospital, he had one point of relief that at least the father was there in the elevator and that's why the lady is not going to come in. There was no room for the fat lady to get in and if she did, his father would see her and maybe he would understand. And this time if the lady would come, then at least the father would understand that this fat lady is trying to scare his son and then he will understand why Martin is not feeling comfortable. When he got home, he could stay in the apartment for a few days. The doctor said that he had to rest as much as possible. Martin felt quite safe from the fat lady now. Now, when he is inside the safe corners of his house, obviously he is quite uh, comfortable. And over here, the security is uh, you know, appreciated by Martin. And now he feels that at least the fat lady is not going to come in. Oh, I almost forgot. His father reached out and pressed number nine. Again, the father is not staying with him in the elevator and on number nine, he is getting out. What are you doing? Asked Martin, trying not to sound afraid. Now, he is asking a question that why are you going out? 
but he does not want to show that he is scared. Father says, I promise to visit Mr. Mrs. Ulmanth, said his father, looking at his watch as he stepped out of the elevator. So he is going to meet some lady over there. And the boy says, let me go with you. I want to visit her too. Martin pleaded, almost pleaded. He is not right now comfortable in the elevator and he wants to stay with the father, struggling to move on his crutches. But the door was already closing. The sensors were walking and door is closing. Afraid to be in the elevator alone, said his father. Grow up, Martin. The door slammed shut. So the father is here also taunting his son. He is passing comments, negative comments for the son. And he is trying to tell him that you have to act like a man. You have to act mature and you cannot always, you know, behave in this kiddish manner. So this is what the father does. Martin hobbled the buttons and pressed 9, but it did not do any good. The elevator stopped at 10 where he where the fat lady was waiting for him. Again, on the floor number 10, the door opens, the fat lady again enters. She moved in quickly and he was too slow to get past her in time to get out. And this time he couldn't get out. The lady enters in the elevator and again they both are inside that narrow space. The door closed and the elevator began to move. And the lady says, hello, Martin and laughed and pushed the stop button. This is where the story ends. I'm sure over here, after listening to all these things, you must have understood that the boy Martin, who is the protagonist, is quite a scared person. He is afraid of strangers. He is not comfortable at his school also. The children are bullying him. The father is constantly taunting him and has no great opinion about him and that is why this boy is underconfident, he is hesitant and he is not comfortable in the elevator, he is feeling claustrophobic. So all these problems are constantly piling up and the entire atmosphere that is created in the story is showing us, the readers, that the boy is imagining that the lady is there. I am sure you must have noticed that whenever the father is with the boy, the lady never comes. And there is no proof that anybody else uh, has seen this lady. So Martin has all these things in his imagination and he is just thinking that there is a lady like this who is trying to harm him or trouble him. And that is why over here, when it ends on an abrupt point that the lady laughs, addresses Martin and presses the stop button, which means that something scary is going to happen to Martin. But the lady is definitely an imaginary character, which is only seen by Martin and nobody else. Even the father is not aware that there is any person like this lives in the building. And one more point is the lady is not coming in the elevator from a certain floor and getting down on a certain floor. She is coming from any floor and going to any floor, which means that it is all an imagination of this boy. And that is what makes this story quite interesting. It is a psychological uh, story where the character of Martin is shown mentally disturbed person. And that is why he is thinking he has created this imaginary character in his mind. So thank you students. I'm sure you have understood this. Now we will stop this lesson. This is Dr. Sagar Pandya and keep listening to these kind of lessons. And I'm sure you are going to learn a lot from this. Thank you very much.